Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Welcome. Welcome to SGK's. Welcome to SGK. Welcome to SGK's around, around the, the world. world. Wherever, Wherever you are. And in whatever time zone you're in. Welcome to SGK's around the world. Welcome to SGK's around the world. Welcome to SGK's around the world. Esteja, seja bem-vindo a SGK around the world. We hope you enjoy the session. We hope you enjoy the session. A gente espera que você curta a sessão. We hope you enjoy the session. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us from all around the world. My name is Simon Cole. I'm a business development director at SGK based in London. I'm really excited today to be introducing Laura and Jose, who are from uh, Hexagon, and they'll be discussing the challenges and trends that they see in business to business marketing, in the, uh, specifically in the mining uh, industry. Now, we're always keen to work with our clients and share the love of innovation and trailblazing. And with Hexagon, we have definitely found that partner. So if you haven't noticed already, we'll also be leading this conversation from the the metaverse, which we'll be visiting shortly, um, another channel that we feel will be very influential in the future, especially in the B2B space. So let's get to it. Now, I'd also like to introduce you to Alison from our global marketing team. Hi, guys. My name is Alison and I'm the marketing and business development coordinator. I'm also based in London. I'm really excited to have um, both Laura and Jose here with us today. Um, so if Laura and Jose, if you could um, each give a quick introduction um, to the audience, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Ferreras. I am the Senior Director of Marketing for Hexagon's Mining Division. We are one of a host of um, industries that Hexagon covers across all heavy industries from geospatial to heavy construction and beyond. Um, I am based in Tucson, Arizona, where I have lived for about eight years. I had a global team of marketers that um, are based in Australia, Ecuador, Canada, and the United States at this point. And one of those illustrious people on my team that I'm proud to call a colleague and friend is Jose Sanchez. Jose? Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having us, uh, Simon and Allison. And yeah, like Laura mentioned, um, I'm part of the marketing team here in, in Hexagon's mining division as well. I am the product marketing manager, and uh, it's been uh, an amazing uh, uh, experience uh, to work with SGK on this project and, and to work with Laura. Um, it's it's uh, really uh, been eye-opening for us and how far we can stretch all this. So um, I'm also here based out of Tucson with Laura um, and uh, been with the company uh, for 15 16 years now so um, really uh, kind of been around for a long time. Thank you guys it's great to have you both here um, it would also be really helpful for our audience to understand just a bit more about Hexagon um, as a business as a whole um, as well as the mining um, industry. So I joined Hexagon about a year and a half ago and it was extremely interesting for me to find out that Hexagon solutions are actually present in 85% of the world's aircraft, 75% of the world's smartphones, and 75% of the world's automobiles. So um, it's a company that has been built on a lot of acquisitions. Our technology is focused on sensors, software, and autonomous solutions. And those, those solutions actually cover a wide array of industries. So Jose and I work in the mining industry, the mining division, um, but we have colleagues around the globe, 22,000 of them actually, that are covering heavy construction, geospatial, smart cities, um, autonomous positioning. I could go on and on with um, the nine divisions that our company covers. Just to add to that, um, I think yeah. the power of working in, within that is amazing. You know, that's one of the things that Laura and I have been seeing a lot of over the last two years specifically, um, how much interaction there is between these divisions. So even though they're different industries, we mix and match, we work together, and there, there's so much power behind that for sure. Thank you. And could you um, maybe go into a little bit more detail of Hexagon's involvement within the mining industry and, and how you are really at the forefront of this space? Definitely. Um, you know, mining is an interesting industry because it has done a lot of uh, 
uh, technological catch up over the last um, uh, decade. Uh, it, it was historically known as sort of an old school, you know, everything's done by hand. Uh, miners tend to have that uh, persona uh, given to them that they're, you know, old prospector types. Um, it's changed a lot. And, and what Hexagon has done is join together these companies that look at all sides of the mining industry, specifically uh, safety, um, operations, planning, um, the whole data flow, all of that is being looked at by, by combining all these companies together. Um, we've started working together and coming up with technology that's really amazing um, in, in itself as technology, but also the way it's connected. That connectivity between planning and, and safety, planning and operations, safety and, and the data that flows, all of that is being um, really uh, pushed to the limits with Hexagon um, uh, in the mining industry. And that's something we're really proud of because I think it is quite unique. To add on to that, um, the the mining industry, as I understand it, is that previously the different parts of the mine might have been considered separately as separate parts of the mine. Whereas what Hexagon is doing is creating solutions that cover the full life of the mine. So this carries on from what Jose was just speaking to, but whereas before maybe you'd get data and it would be specific to a certain part of the mine. Now all those different parts of the mine can be working together in unison where we're learning things along the way that make decision making more easy for different leaders um, or miners across across the life of the mine. So whether that be in exploration or in material movement in drill and blast planning um, survey and monitoring those different parts of the mine are now talking to each other and that's providing greater safety and efficiency and sustain sustainability and i think the um hexagon's life of mine um experience really sort of is a really good example of the way that we've seen how the different systems can really talk to each other and it's really helped with Hexagon's marketing and sales strategy so I think the first things first is that we can sort of sh dig deep into these marketing strategies um, and we can um, give a bit of a demo of the Hexagon's life of mine experience um, so if I share my screen now um, and then Jose Laura if you want to talk us through the different elements of the life of mine experience um, I think that'll be a a good starting point. The Life of Mine Interactive Experience is a project that we have been working on with SGK for over a year now, and it's gone through several phases with the objective being to present the life of the mine in a way that is respectful of the of the truth of the mine and of how our customers are actually living and breathing and working within the mine. So um, Jose will show you more. This has been really his pet project um, and it's been truly amazing to see it grow. Great, thank you, Laura. Yes, um, like Laura just said, uh, you know, we wanted something that, that could show how our technology works together, the breadth of our technology, which really is all over the mine. Um, so we, we tried to capture it this way and SDK has been great at, um, at, first of all, learning all about mining and then um, being able to apply it to an interface like this. So the Life of Mine Interactive Experience is meant to be an exploratory uh, interface where you go in, you choose things, you look around and you you find out for yourself what, what's going on. And we, um, for this iteration of, of the Life of Mine, we've uh, broken everything out by workflows. So typical workflows in a mine, instead of going into the actual solutions right away, how are they connected in these workflows? There's exploration, planning, drill and blast, material movement and survey and monitoring. Um, we've added uh, as well a, a way of navigating all of those, uh, those uh, workflows directly with a site map. And this is really useful for us because we can go straight into one of the scenes or, or look at to see what the workflows are actually comprised of. Um, I always like to show off these because they're some of my favorite scenes in Life of Mind interactive experience. Um, you know, right away with a, with a quick visual animation, um, the, the user is led to understand what this technology does, but then 
we reinforce that with copy. We reinforce it with some uh, add-ons like uh, these copy uh, boxes that can be opened up and read. We can play videos from here. These videos are easy to change and put in new ones once we've made new ones that have uh, um, you know, new branding or anything like that. And then you go to your next scene. So once you've finished the scene, you can go to your next scene. And it walks you through how these are connected. So, you know, acid health is one thing that keeps the trucks healthy. Well, what else do you need? You need safety. You need that safety bubble around it. So this is the type of animation that's typical of explaining in a visual animation what uh, what's happening with the technology. Um, and, and yeah, this is it's been extremely powerful at trade shows. Um, we are now planning our online launch as well and really hoping that this will drive clients to, to explore and to ask questions and to get engaged. Um, you know, there's a contact us form now and we're working all the time on how to integrate it with our other systems so that we can engage with clients. That's a quick overview for you guys to, to sort of understand what this life of mine interactive experience is. What I was going to add to to the conversation is around how we are trying to build this in a smart way for the future. So as marketers, we are always put in front of changes, which is great because our company is innovative and then there's always new technology and new ways that things are working together. And we want to constantly be able to make these updates in a quick and easy way. Um, so we have done a lot of work in the background on integrations with some of our content management platforms so that we could have a single source of truth that feeds into our life of mine experience. And I think for any of the marketers out there listening, they will um, definitely feel the pain in that sense. And we're trying to make our life of mine experience um, more seamless and, and, and have it so that our sales teams and our colleagues on the commercial side are able to always um, have trust in what they're seeing and our customers as well. They know that everything is is up to date. So, so th this is really, you know, it's, it's extraordinary and, and, and quite visionary, um, you know, from from the, the concept of this all encompassing, as you, as you mentioned, um, single source of, of uh, information around the, the the, the collateral and, and the value propositions and so forth of, of all of your product sets. What led to this kind of train of thought? You know, where, where, where were you prior to this that led you into to wanting to go down this or, or envisioning this, this new way of um, uh, talking about your, your product suite? I think um, I, I can I can take the first stab at that. Um, you know, for from my experience uh, being the product marketer, um, the the our president uh, Nick Hare um, had a vision and had that that ask from us as a marketing department. Um, let's reinvent something. Let's we need something new, something modern, something engaging. Um, you know, we used to rely a lot on a poster uh, that was just one graphic, one 2D representation of all our technology, and it was just getting too hard to represent, to really show what we do with just a static image. Um, and he really wanted something that that showed all the connections, showed the technology, but was way more dynamic. And this was the first thought that we had was was working with the with third party, uh, in this case SGK, to come up with this this um, you know uh, different way of looking at it, way more engaging, something that actually attracts people not just visually but also the content that we're we're providing uh, makes them think about their own uh, experience with their mind, their own technology, and makes them realize how our solutions can fit into their life of of mine. What that translates into for our customers is personalization. So rather than having a standard data sheet that we would give to everyone in a previous um, in a previous time in our history, now we're able to offer this whether on our website, at trade shows, offline. So people can go to faraway mines in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, and our our teams can be sharing um, through a downloadable app version that is being created. So what that means again is personalization. So not everybody is has the same plan for their minds and the life of mind experiences allows for our customers to walk through at their pace 
to look at the challenges that are most important to them and what kind of solutions exist today to help them get through these challenges. Again, with the idea being operational efficiencies, um, safety for the, those working in the mine, and sustainability. And, and how do you, you know, as, as the industry as a whole, for instance, you, you know, you, you talk about personalization and, and being able to uh, tailor that that message and that engagement on a, on a you know, one to one basis. Is, is that something that's commonplace in the industry or are you guys kind of leading the way with that, um, that kind of thought process? Uh, I, I know your, your sales cycles are very long, um, so obviously something to uh, to take into account as well. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the the big difference here, um, wanting to use this type of an interface to to you know engage with with our customers when we're going through that sales cycle. I think the big difference is that before it was very manual and it, it took a lot of more resources in the sense that we would have to have people doing demos, uh, not as connected, right? Because as soon as you start getting SMEs involved, uh, subject matter experts involved in uh, doing demos, they know they're one piece. And so they, the, 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 the receiver would just get a little piece of this, a little piece of that, and it was harder to show that connectivity. Um, this, the, the, the advantage and what we're really trying to strive for with the life of mine experience is to make sure that they do receive that connectivity. They do see how these uh, connect and how um, the solution is more than just, hey, we got one piece of software that you can use right now. For sure, we want to show that, but we also want to show that that piece of software connects to fleet management, which connects to safety, which connects to the the overarching data uh, flow of of everything that's happening in the world. And and th th this is um, as well, you know, this tool and and the, this actual strategy is is actually crossing the, the the boundary between marketing and sales, right? It's it's top of funnel, but also a, a tool that. Um, uh, is multi-use right and sales can can leverage such a thing yeah definitely and and you know i i do think it is um on the forefront um you know uh, first of all not i don't think many of our competitors if any are doing such a huge broad um you know encompassing all angles of the mine um but i as well uh, the way we talk to our customers because of that i think we're also on the forefront of of the way we present all of all these solutions so yeah, the Life of Mine interactive experience is a great way for marketing and the commercial teams to work more closely because this is a way for our teams on the technical side to really shine and to show their expertise across the life of the mine as opposed to maybe what other vendors may do, which is try and sell one piece of hardware one software package with Hexagon and with this tool, we're putting into the hands of our colleagues and into the hands of our customers a way that they can see from end to end, from pit to port, um, where they can make sense of their data and be using it in a way that makes a difference, you know, from their revenue to their safety, you know, to saving the world. Is um so 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 you guys are uh, uh, you know a very innovative, highly uh, technological company. So is there a pressure then in in the in the marketing mix and how you engage with your customer in order to to duplicate that or 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 um to to help communicate that that overall um you know market leading technology you know aspect? I mean, does it play a part in the marketing strategy or? It's not just the pressure. I think it's more of uh, the vision, like we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, exactly. We're a technology company. We want to make sure that the way we present our technology and solutions is modern, engaging, um, and then I think it it fit right in there. You know, this this vision of 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 the life of mine experience and the way it's it's being fleshed out is perfect for conveying that that level of of technology that that we're offering. 
Fantastic. And of course, you know, with the creation of all these assets, which are in the 3D world, that allows you to um, to, to make them multi-use. Um, you know, as, as you have mentioned um, earlier in, in, you know, real world experiences on, on conference booths, uh, as well as the digital ones. Um, and um, like, for instance, we can we can actually take a step into the mine um, here and by utilizing um, the metaverse. So um, let's take a, a quick snap of the fingers and 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 jump into the mine shall we here we are in the base of uh of, of the lomix pit uh we see uh, a drill rig sitting over there within the metaverse um you, you guys uh you base this on a uh a, a open pit I, I believe which is roughly based on a, a copper mine is that correct yeah we we wanted to capture sort of a generic um mine that has different phases going at the same time mines can be extremely complex so we wanted to pick something that that represented enough of, of a space where we could uh, highlight technology. And of course, this is ever evolving because I'm sure as as Lomix grows, as in our company grows, we'll probably have to have new scenes like we're working already on scenes for underground, which will be so probably the, in the next phase, um, the underground mine. So that's a very different environment than here. So, yeah, just trying to capture all of it in one uh, setting. And and. Um... You know, new technologies uh, such as the metaverse and so forth um, would allow you to to potentially communicate some of the value propositions in more of uh, uh, more allowing the the prospect to to actually experience those um, things in a in a digital world. Um, you know, in, in the way you communicate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one of the things that happened over the last two years because we were doing so much Zoom calling and. Um, you know, remote uh, uh, conversations. Um, it really, I think, brought forward the importance of being able to have a space, um, uh, you know, virtual reality or, or a, a 3D space where we can showcase things. And, and I think it opened up a ma many doors. Um, and, and this looks like one of those, those uh, interfaces that we, we would love to keep using um, because from anywhere in the world, you can join somebody and have them, you know, give them a tour of what you're looking at um, for, for any type of mining situation. That's great. And, and then that plays into the question around. So so obviously the digital channels is extremely important, even with a with a, you know, a costly investment purchase on on, um, uh, you know, with, with a long sales cycle that the, the, the digital channel plays a, um, a role within that marketing strategy. Yeah, digital yeah. marketing. I mean, the digital channel to me, there are so many digital channels. So um, when, you know, sitting where I'm sitting, there's, you know, digital advertising, there's email, there's our website, there's the Life of Mine interactive experience there. I mean, I'm, I'm leaving things out right now. Social media, there's so many digital channels that we're focused on. And similarly uh, to the ones that I just listed, the Life of Mine interactive experience that we've developed with, with SGK enables us to understand what's resonating with our customers and what is resonating less. So that enables us to understand what's making the um, industry tick, what's important to the industry, where they are putting their efforts on an individual level. Um, and so that allows us to be that more personalized in the way that we communicate and the way that we build our products and our solutions. Because at the end of the day, of course, this is for our customers, everything that we do. And so this enables us, digital allows us to listen more and to understand more and to be closer with um, the industry that we care so much about. And, and that that speaks to of, of um, you know the the fact that uh, you guys are, are connecting all of your um, you know all of all of your your marketing efforts and your, and your sales efforts into as you, you mentioned before like single sources of truth. So there's an understanding of of all of those touch points. So our marketing allows for us to benefit from what the digital world brings to us today. Marketing 30 years ago is different than marketing is today. And marketing in 30 years from now, presumably will be very different than what we're doing today. But what, what I love about the digital space is that behind the scenes, different things are working, 
creating data similarly to what we give to our customers, allowing that data to work for them and allowing that data to speak to each other and make for a more efficient mine. Similarly, the digital space for marketers allows for us to connect the dots on the marketing side, again, with the goal being to be personalized and to really help individuals and customers and businesses out there to make smart decisions. We think. Um, Jose, Laura, thank you so much for your time today. Um, it, it, it's been thoroughly insightful. Um, it's been great to to see um you know th th this this vision that you guys have and, and how um you're implementing it um with the you know the, 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 within the challenge of um you know typical kind of b2b challenges of long sales cycles and and uh, engaging people um you know across that, that that entire spectrum thank you laura and thank you jose for sharing your insights um on the hexagon life of mine experience i'm excited to share um, and continue the conversation with simon um as we now talk about the metaverse um particularly the benefits of the metaverse and how b2b um companies can leverage the metaverse as a sales um strategy <laughs> Thank you, Alison. The um, yeah, so um, it, it, you know the, what we learned from uh, how um, Jose and, and, and Laura and, and the, the Mexican team are um, you know looking to to recreate and, and engage with their customers through you know various digital technologies. It, it naturally paths a, a a way once you've created this three dimensional world all of these 3d assets to look at other ways in which you can utilize them which naturally progresses into things like potentially ar and vr and so forth um, what we see specifically with those um, existing technologies they tend to be into a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship so they're very very close um, you know you've got you've got a helmet maybe with a visor on for, or, or you're looking through uh, an iPad or a camera lens or something for, for a VR related um, uh, uh, technology or I mean sorry for an AR related technology with a VR related technology you're fully enclosed with a, with a helmet and, and so forth so it's a very isolated um, experience. When we start to move into the metaverse and spe specifically from a B2B standpoint this is a one-to-many relationship um, that it offers you so so um, you know one person presenting, one person um, selling um, to a group of people um, or, or just a, a singular individual. So it, it's, a, it's definitely a, a slight shift in the way that um, we want to look at that. And then just because it's in the metaverse, we use the, the phraseology metaverse, does not necessarily mean um, it's public, which is the case, for instance, um, that we see here with with, Mex, uh, with Hexman's mine. Um, in here that um, this is a closed environment, it's a very secure environment, and only those that um, uh, invited to participate can can enter this uh, this particular um, part of um, of the domain. Thank you, Simon. Um, so we've already seen a lot of talk about the metaverse, but it's largely been focused on B two C companies. So for the likes of experiential beers and experiential shopping, that type of thing. But how really can B two B companies really benefit from the metaverse, and what types of things are we seeing um, that they can really help leverage? So I think the first thing that we need to do when we're, we're talking about the metaverse is get over the image that we all have mostly from the media of a bunch of Gen Zers running around in some sort of communal space causing the, you know, yeah. all the fun and causing all kinds of havoc. If, if we start to think about, you know, if we go back 10, 15, uh, maybe even 20 years um, and start to look at it from um, sentence structure that if you added the word cyberspace instead of metaverse, it would be exactly the same thing. So we're, we're, we're um, we're innovating and, and taking our first early steps into cyberspace or the metaverse and seeing how this technology can can be used. As I mentioned, it does offer the opportunity for uh, a one to many um, uh, experience. And, and that's the key word in this. So in B2B specifically, we as, as, as salespeople have got in the habit of presenting our products and services, our value propositions to potential customers in many different forms. It can be, you know, very. It can be printed material, it can be PowerPoints, it can be uh, information on on conference booths and so forth. We present what we're selling in order to to create that sale. 
with the metaverse, actually, that, that allows for us to, to fundamentally shift the, the way that we think about that, because we can now allow our prospects and our customers to experience what we're saying, experience the value proposition, experience the, the value and the benefits of those particular products in a very different way. So it, it does require us to, sh uh, to, um, to shift our thinking yeah. around that, away from presenting and into um, uh, experiencing. So, you know, um, start thinking about, you know, how would we best communicate the, the, the value of our products and services in an experiential form? Yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks, Simon. It's a huge shift, isn't it, from this whole experiential to presentation, um, particularly for B2B um, companies. Are there any additional technologies that B2B um, companies can also use? Um, I know that the, the likes of sort of digital twinning um, is something that's really trending. Could you tell us a bit more about that? So I think... Um, the, the, the digital twinning is a tremendous technology and it does allow us to um, open up, um, again, the experiential side um, quite dramatically. So when you start looking at digital twinning, which is essentially utilizing real time data points within um, you know, your, your product or service or where your product or service lives or the way that you make um, products or services, um, it allows you to recreate them in a digital environment. BMW, for instance, have done this. They have one of their assembly plants in Germany um, digital twinned in the metaverse, in their own private metaverse, where they can bring, um, you know, customers and, and, and various um, uh, uh, kind of VIPs and so forth into this digital environment, and they can see in real time exactly what's happening on one of their uh, assembly plants, um, you know, problems, speeds, you name it, it it's duplicated in real time um, using um, digital twin technology in, in their own metaverse. Um, so, you know, how that might be relevant to you, it allows you to, one, demonstrate your product and service if, for instance, um, your product and service is utilised in a dangerous environment. Um, right now, uh, you know, Alison, we're standing in you know on the edge of the, of the top yeah. of, a, of a, a, a copper mine um something that we would not be allowed to do in, in real life obviously for, for health and safety but you know hexagon in this particular instance does not own the mine um this uh, this, this particular one that it was modeled on uh, over they're, they're not a mining company they're a technology company so getting their customers access to somebody else's mine is obviously not an option likewise if you're in medical um uh, medical technologies or medical instrumentation and so forth, you know, having access to, to patients inside operating rooms and so forth, very difficult. The same could be said for um, if um, elements of your, your, um, your products and services are extremely confidential, um, whereas bringing them into their working environment would be, um, you know, giving out uh, restrictive information. So, by, by recreating all of the important parts of that um, using digital twinning technology, it can be real time, it can be pre-recorded and so forth, you can conveniently leave out the key parts that you don't want to share um, from a confidentiality standpoint. So it really is you know, today looking at things from a slightly different perspective um, and, and understanding, okay, we have this technology, we have this ability to now allow our customers to experience it. What can we show them? What, can, what journey can we take them on? It demonstrates that value. That's brilliant. Thank you, Simon. And I think it's been really interesting to hear a bit more about the benefits of the metaverse. Um, and it's been a, a real teaser for future insights. Um, so really excited to share that Simon um, will also be continuing to share um, these metaverse insights. Um, so yeah, thanks again, Simon. And we look forward to hearing more. Um, yeah, if you'd like to just uh, wrap up the session, that'd be great. Uh, thanks, uh, Alison. Yeah, absolutely. And looking forward to exploring um, as this technology evolves, you know, what opportunities um, it does allow us to do. As you can see quite clearly from the uh, uh, couple of days that have gone by since we shot the, uh, the hexagon part of this, Alison and I have grown some legs. So <laughs> yeah. the, the, the platform's uh, updated itself and changed in, um, in a matter of a couple of days. So th this, this world is constantly improving. 
constantly um, allowing more functionality. So let's start digging into that and see what uh, what exciting opportunities we can uh, we can unveil. Yeah, well, look forward to seeing you again, Simon. Maybe in the metaverse, maybe in the office. Who knows? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.